So this clip is on hominid skull anatomy, comparing the gorilla and the human. This is a gorilla. They live in Central Africa. There are two species, both of which that have two subspecies. On the uh, western coast, uh, western side in Central Africa, there is the western lowland gorilla. That one's the most common and the one that you'll most commonly see in zoos. The other one that's quite famous is the eastern uh, side, uh, and it is the eastern uh, mountain gorilla, and it's a lot hairier than, uh, than its other gorilla relatives. Uh, this one here is obviously a little human model. Uh, there are six billion of those on the planet, and they're all one species. So looking at the gorilla skull compared to the human skull, you notice there's a lot of differences. Obviously, to start with size, the size of the gorilla skull compared to the human skull, uh, a lot bigger. So uh, looking at the chunkiness of the bones, we can see that the gorilla skull is more robust compared to the human skull, which is more gracile and fragile looking. We can see the slope of the forehead going back from the eyes. Uh, on the gorilla skull, it's a lot more sloped going straight back, whereas the human skull has got more of a forehead going on uh, at the front here. Um, so writing that, we have got a sloping forehead compared to an upright forehead. And that's going to affect how much brain um, is in, enclosed within the skull. The um, brain of a gorilla, even though it's a very big skull, is actually only half the size of the human skull. So it's at around 700 cc or cubic centimetres compared to a human skull, which is about 1400 cc. Uh, the gorilla skull is also missing some of those thinky thinky parts that the uh, human skull has obviously in that frontal lobe there. All right, looking then at the dentition uh, and nutrition that the um, different animals are going to be eating, we know that a gorilla is a herbivore, whereas the human here is an omnivore, and that's affecting uh, how the skull is going to be uh, looking. At the top, we can see this big crest running along. That's called the sagittal crest, and the sagittal crest is the point of attachment for a group of muscles running down the side of the skull here and underneath this zygomatic arch or cheekbone. So in a gorilla, we have a large sagittal crest, and that is not present the same way. You can see that nice smoothness of the human skull. And we have a large and quite robust, heavy-looking zygomatic arch. The zygomatic arch was the cheekbone, and that is much smaller and more fragile looking, you can see here in the human skull. My human skull is a little bit sad looking, so um, hopefully you'll be able to see that without its poor teeth falling out and it falling apart. But a very fragile um, zygomatic arch there in comparison. All right, uh, those attach onto the lower mandible, and you can see that the lower mandible on the, um, the gorilla skull is a lot wider. So it has got a wide, thickened lower mandible compared to a much uh, more narrow mandible on the human side here. And obviously, a lot smaller muscles running down to it because of the um, nature of the food that they're going to be eating. The uh, gorilla needs to grind up its food because it's eating a lot of leaves and um, twigs and small branches as well, whereas humans are going to be not grinding up the food the same way. So they have the same dentition. Um, so it is written as 2-2. Now this is just looking at either the left side or the right side of the skull. Two incisors on the top, two incisors on the bottom, one canine on the top, one on the bottom. You can see these here going around. Then we have two premolars at the top, two at the bottom, three molars at the top, and three at the bottom. Um, the canines here are not used for um, killing animals um, and eating them, uh, like you would expect most canine teeth to be doing. They're actually just used for display purposes. We have a small diastema in here to enable the, um, the canines to fit in properly, whereas that's obviously not needed on the human skull, although there are a lot of gaps on that one. Um, so these are not present here. 
Uh, humans tend to not grow wisdom teeth the same way that we may have uh, in the past because of our t changes in diet, whereas that's going to be absolutely necessary in the gorilla to have all those um, molars, uh, all three of them present along there. All right, you can also see going underneath there is no chin on a gorilla compared to a chin on humans, and that may have been sexually selected for, obviously, um, women prefer men with a big chin. The snout coming forward um, is more prominent on the gorilla. It's a much more flattened face on the um, human skull. So that's called pronathism. And that's present on the gorilla, but not so much on the flattened face of the uh, human skull. Last things, um, looking at the back of the skull, you can see that there's a big, another big um, crest going along the back here. This is called the nuchal crest and you can see a hole at the back here as well. This hole is called the foramen magnum and the foramen magnum is the point where the vertebrae attach on. So the atlas bone, the top of the vertebral column, is sitting just underneath here. And if that's uh, my gorilla, looking at my little gorilla model here too, you can see that his uh, back is sloping. It's not upright like the uh, human one is. So this foramen magnum is bringing out the vertebral column at an angle like this, compared to it being very upright on a human. So it's directly underneath, and that allows the um, skull to balance a little bit precariously on top of the uh, vertebrae. So those key words there are uh, foramen magnum, means big hole at the back of the skull, and that is angled compared to upright. Also have that big nuchal crest on the back of the gorilla skull, whereas it is completely absent on the back of the human skull. There you can see it's completely smooth. That's a point of attachment for the muscles so that the, um, the gorilla is basically able to hold up its head while it's um, walking along because it's quadrupedal habitually compared to a human which is bipedal.